Parashat Toldot. Two brothers, twins from birth. They start off their childhood being raised on the knees of Abraham, educated by Abraham, their grandfather. But by the time they're 15, when Abraham passes on, we meet two so dramatically different individuals. The battle between Yaakov and Esav continues for years to come. And in the next few parashiyot, we'll see various aspects of this great battle. The perspective of Yitzchak and Rivka, however, is quite perplexing. We are told by the Torah that Yitzchak loved Esav. But the Torah tells us that Rivka is loving Yaakov. The formula of Ayahav Yitzchak et Esav kitzayit b'fi v'rivka ohevet et Yaakov leads Chazal to tell us zo ahava hatluya b'davar v'zo ahava she'einen hatluya b'davar This is a love that is dependent on something. It is dependent upon the actions that Esav was doing. But rather Rivka's love for Yaakov was continuous, unconditional. This is the love that we seek. However, the battle between them is rather perplexing and unclear. This battle leads Yaakov ultimately to engage in behavior that is so difficult to accept. He cheats his own father in order to get a blessing. One must wonder, what was going through Yitzchak's mind when he intended to give a blessing to Esav and not to Yaakov? Could he not see what Esav was really all about? Was he that blind where he couldn't see that Yaakov was devoted to the life of Torah and Judaism while Esav was running around in the field? What was this fragrance of a field Re'ah chasadeh that Yitzchak smelled that gave him this great inspiration to give the blessing that he gave. The key to understanding the debate between them is actually found curiously at the end of the parsha. You would think that after Yaakov steals the blessing from Yitzchak, Yitzchak would be furious at him. He would want to curse him. He would want to punish him. Instead, he summons Yitzchak, Yaakov and he tells him that he must go on a journey because he needs to be protected from his angry brother. And when he is ready to send him off, he gives him Birkat Avraham. He blesses him even more. What is Birkat Avraham? Without understanding this, we can't really understand what the fight was all about. See, Birkat Avraham is the blessing of the land. The land of Eretz Israel, the future of the Jewish people, was all vested into the hands of Yaakov. This was never intended to Esav. Yitzchak had absolutely no intention of giving that bracha to Esav. He knew who Yaakov truly was. Yitzchak had a different dream. Yitzchak hoped that Esav will be the one that would be out in the field, working, conquering the world, and providing sustenance for Yaakov so Yaakov could devote his life to spiritual pursuits. His dream was that his children would live side by side, supporting one another. The ideal utopian design that was developed between the tribes of Issachar and Zevulun was Zevulun was the merchant, the businessman that went out to work while Yisachar learnt and taught the children of Zevulun and Yisachar together and made sure to set up a chavruta whenever possible with Zevulun that provided sustenance for both tribes. This was the ideal that Yitzchak saw. This is what he hoped. Indeed, he could not see the true essence of Esav. Rivka could. Rivka knew very well that if it was left up to Esav to provide sustenance for Yaakov, Yaakov would starve. That indeed, if it was left up to Esav to hold up the Jewish people, the Jewish people would be doomed. She also knew that Yaakov had buried deep inside of him the power to leave the Beit Midrash. 
the power to provide sustenance for his family. Will that come at a price? Well, of course, it does. Those of us that are able are dedicating their lives to Talmud Torah. Those of us that are more suited for pursuits in providing sustenance to everyone else should do that. Ultimately, Yaakov was able to have children that can do both. And he built the great Jewish nation of the 12 tribes supporting one another. It was Yitzchak's vision that was skewed. He did not see what Asa was really about. Yaakov stepped out of the box. He had to trick his father to set the stage for the blessings to be given to him. In fact, Asa was given a similar blessing as well at the end. He also receives riches of the world. But Yaakov is no longer dependent upon him. It took nearly 30 years for Esau to come to that recognition. In two weeks, we will readdress this issue and we will explore how Yaakov saw his own destiny while Esau built a nation all to himself when they once again meet after all the years of exile that Yaakov had to endure. Shabbat Shalom.